The end bad governance protests, which began on August 1st, 2024, have sparked widespread attention with demonstrators decrying President Bola Tinubu's economic policies and what is regarded as misgovernance. This came amid accusations of political motivations and warnings against the repeat of the violent 2020 NSAS protest. As the protests abate with normalcy returning to northern Nigeria and several other parts of the country, concerns arise about the government's response, the impact on the economy and the potential for violence, raising questions about the effectiveness of the protest in driving change, the government's willingness to listen and the balance between free speech and public order, all of which war warrant careful consideration and discussion. Dr. Sam Oguche, the coordinator of Yaga Africa Center for Legislative Engagement, joins us now to review the nationwide protests so far. Thank you for being with us here on Arise News. Good morning. Yes, good morning. Thank you for having me this day. Thank you for being here. Well, let's um, go straight into it. I mean, we've seen what's been happening um, over the past two days in the country. Uh, when you compare what's happened in the south and in the north, we're seeing more of a, a, a chaos uh, erupting in those parts of the country. How would you um, how would you gauge the government's response? Uh, how would you gauge the security forces' response to this protest? And would you say that the protests so far have been successful in achieving its objective? Uh, yes, uh, if you look at the outlook of the protest, you will discover that uh, we have a successful outing in some parts of the country. Why, as we said, as you said, we also have problems in other parts. But uh, for me, I think it has been very successful because the essence is to tell the government the frustrations of the people. The citizens have been able to come out to tell the government what they feel and how they feel governance should be. But in terms of security response, I think the security agencies have been on top of their game also. Because if you go to some flashpoints, they are strategically located or stationed. And the fears prior to the protest is what is playing out in other parts of the country. Protest is a constitutional right, right to freedom of association and peaceful assembly. And um, it is part of democracy for the citizens to tell the government that things are not well. But when it becomes violent, then there is a limitation. There is no absolute right anywhere. And that is why the police is on top of the game. They are, they are doing their best to bring this situation under control. So if you see the general assessment, why it has been successful in other parts, it is a failure in other parts of the country because it has turned violent. And citizens have um, taken other routes that are outside what the original intent is. And so that, that is my response. The security forces, the, age, the police and other security outfits are on top of it. And you can even see that curfew, you know, has been declared in some parts of the country and which shouldn't be so. Mm. All right, Dr. Gucci, uh, I'm interested in you uh, taking this uh, further, breaking it down for us. When you, when you describe a protest as being successful or otherwise, uh, precisely what are we talking about? Uh, because when you say that the essence of a protest is to get the uh, uh, is to get the protesters to be heard or for government to do something um, in two days do you think that uh, anything of such has been achieved 17 people dead so far uh, billions of properties you know uh, are destroyed we saw what happened in Kano uh, where so many places were looted will you think that um, that is the sort of a thing that get the government to respond. And then if you can add that to it, a lot of people think that uh, the president coming out to speak at some point uh, will probably highlight the success of a protest. But we haven't seen uh, President Bola Tinubu do that. What will be your assessment of the reaction of government so far? Not the security forces now, but the government and essentially the president himself. Yes, uh, at this stage in the history of Nigeria, go, by the, you know, looking at the ongoing protest, one would expect the president to come out now to address Nigerians. So looking at it from that angle, 
we cannot, you know, say that it is, you know, yielding the desired results. But it is an incremental thing. It is um, gradual. I expect that in no time from now, the president should address the nation. Citizens are angry. And as you said, if you look at the other parts of the country, like Kano, what is happening there is actually regrettable. And it is not what we should envisage as a nation, because we are all seeing a kind of breakdown of law and order. And as I said earlier, this is why each time Nigerians want to protest, security forces like the police are warning. If it is a peaceful protest, no problem. But by the time you are making it violent, there is no absolute right. But what I would say is, yes, the essence is for the people to tell the government what they feel. But you measure the success from the other part of it by the reaction of the government. Keeping mute does not solve any problem. But if you ask me, as I said, I would say that the government has not been responsive enough in the face of the ongoing protest. So it is necessary now for the government, especially the president, to address the nation, address the citizens. Because if people hear from him, it has that effect. What, what, of, what, you know, telling the citizens, okay, the government what, what is you hearing think, you. Uh, Dr. Dr. Oguche, but now that, Dr. Oguche, what do you think the citizens yes, you. what do you think the citizens would like to hear at this point in time from him? What will you as an individual li like to hear from the president now that we're on day three, even though things have largely slowed down uh, and normalcy seems to be returning to the country, what will you like to hear from the president? Yes, the essence of the protest, if you look at the various placards that um, Nigerians are carrying, end bad governance, price of petrol, uh, petroleum products, you know, general inflation, I will personally want the government to address these issues. The essence is, if, if security and welfare of the people that is the primary purpose of government, if people are not feeling it, then they are bound to be angry. And now that they are angry, I will want the president to address those issues. The immediate issue is, if the current price of petroleum products can be addressed, is there anything the president is doing? Tell Nigerians, there is, no, there, there is no result that will come out of this silence. If you are doing something to tackle or address the issues that Nigerians are raising, let them know. How do you want to address this lingering issue, this biting inflation, and the consequent hardship that it has imposed on Nigerians? He should tell us. He should tell Nigerians. People are watching. They are expecting him. He is the leader, commander-in-chief. Nigerians are expecting him to speak out. And, and that is what I expect from him now. I would personally want to see policies in place to address the current hike in petroleum prices, uh, you know, prices of petroleum products and the general inflation. If the president can address this, and then the insecurity in other parts of the country, in some parts of the country. Now you said 17 people dead. Is that um, worth celebrating? So we have to address these issues. The president should come out to talk about these issues so that Nigerians know what the direction we are going, to know what we should expect in the coming days. So if you keep mute, then people will continue, and that is not in the interest of our democracy at all. Thank you. Now, I want to ask you, um, what of, which, of the, which of the demands of the protesters do you think that the government has acquiesced to? You know, if we're going to see this as a successful protest, in which ways has the government acquiesced to any of the demands of the protesters from what you, you've seen? Well, I read it somewhere that the government is sending grains to the various parts of the country. I don't know how this is going to solve the problem. Because the grains, just as we saw in some parts, people went to some warehouses where they say palliatives were kept and then these things happened. So uh, I think that is a reaction, if there is anything to go by, but it is not sufficient to tackle the problems we have. And that is why... I, as I mentioned earlier, when you see people protesting, it is, to, it is because the normal channel of communication, the orthodox method of communication has broken down. And that is 
um, you know, the representatives at the various legislative houses, local government to the federal level. And the, so if those ones are no longer working, people will now protest. But the perfect example is what we saw in Plateau State, where citizens came together peacefully, not minding religious inclinations, both Muslims and Christians protested. And in fact, you could even see all of them together when the Muslim brothers were praying. And at the end of the day, they cleared the mess created at the venue of the protest. This is what we should expect in a civilized nation. But that also carries, uh, it puts an obligation on the government that when citizens come out, you should respond. You should talk to them. I think in some states, the governors came out. So we expect that the president should come out to respond to, you know, calm down tension, to down tension. As it is now, it is not really in the interest of our democracy because citizens are getting frustrated. But the government, I believe, is working out things. The federal government will be working out things. But the grains, as I read, will not be sufficient. So I will want an immediate reaction to the issue of petroleum prices, petrol, for example, and then um, you know, insecurity and general inflation. So these are things that we want immediate reaction and response from the government. Mm. So for me, what I have seen so far is not enough. All right, then. Thank you uh, so much, uh, Dr. Uh, Samoguchi. But we're going to just quickly uh, take a look at these live feeds from the Gani Fawaimi Freedom Park in Ojota, Lagos, the ground of the end bad governance protest, which enter enters day three today. However, there is a sharp drop in the population of protesters compared to the first day. Uh, we have a rise senior correspondent, uh, Tukumbo Onyetunji, who will be bringing us updates uh, shortly. But let's just bring it back to you, because what we are seeing now, even with those images there and the curfews that have been set in um, certain parts of the north, we're seeing, we might be looking like the protests are gradually losing steam. What do you think is going to be the future of this end bad governance movement? What steps can protesters and the civil society take to sustain momentum and continue to advocate for change? Doctor? Yes, uh, what I would say is um, a situation in some parts of the country, I would say there is a negative protest where people just stay away. But if you look at it, you see that the crowd is gradually going down. The you know, turnout is gradually you know, going down. So you will see that people have become so tired and they want to go about their normal duties also. But in terms of going forward, we should be able to engage the citizens. Let the citizens know that coming to protest is not an avenue to loot. It's not an avenue for lawlessness. Because by the time you become lawless, security agencies will, will, will respond. And by the time they, they respond, you will see maybe the allegations of live bullets and ammunition being fired, allegations of hot water being sprinkled on people, uh, tear gas, canisters, and all those things. So if you don't conduct yourself in an orderly manner, you don't expect a civil response from the security agencies too. And that's what is happening. So going forward, I will want to see a situation where civil society organizations will sensitize the citizens on the essence of coming out to protest. And as you come out to protest, can you respect the rights of others too? There are some people who will not... I saw a video somewhere where some people were just breaking down traffic lights. Some were just destroying public... Uh, uh, build public uh, utilities and all the rest. So it does not go well with our democracy. It doesn't speak well of us. So the area of public sensitization should be paramount to, to civil society organizations and organizers of these uh, protests. Sorry, that sorry, they should sensitize have, citizens. Yeah, if they are coming out, question. they should know what they are asking for. And by the, the, the time they ask for these things, they should wait for the government to respond, not taking to lawlessness, not destroying public properties <clears throat> and the rest. Yeah, but do you believe that um, destruction of public property reflects the larger um, population, which we had peaceful protests in most areas? So the destruction of public property, do you think that it reduces the value of the demands of the protesters? Do you think it reflects on the peaceful protesters? And also, I would like to ask, is the prevention of destruction of property, is the 
protection of life and property. Is that not the job of our security services? There will always be bad elements, but does it not, does the onus not fall on the police to ensure that public property is not destroyed? Yes, it is the duty of the police. And that's why prior to the protest, the IG spoke out. If it is peaceful, you receive protection. But if it is violent, they will not take it. And that goes to show, you see, you don't give, when you have a government that um, seems to be uncomfortable with protest, you don't give the government an opportunity or, or it kind of corroborate the allegations. Before the protest, they were saying, okay, it is likely or it was likely to be another instance protest. And what we have, what we have seen in terms of destruction of public property is a kind of validation of that position. And when you do that, you will see security forces. You see them in their full force. And that is why people are saying, okay, if you take that way of becoming violent or becoming destructive, then you have um, brought the legitimacy of the entire protest you know, to question in that part of the country. And that's why we are saying that, yes, by the time you go to protest, can you sensitize the people enough? And it's, there are bad elements, uh, as you said. But the police also, in some angles, you also uh, you, you know, try to ask them, why would you allow opposition protesters to come to the same venue where demonstrators are? So by the time you have two groups you know, coming together, you are bound to have violence. But I'm happy that you know, there are measures in place to curtail all those things. So you know, speaking about it generally, I would say that being violent has had negative effect on the entire outlook of the demonstration because it calls illegitimacy to question. It you know, brings the, the intent to bear. At the end of the day, you will see that, yes, the fears that the government had expressed before the protest is what is playing out. And that is not good, you know, for a venture of this nature where citizens are supposed to go out. If you go to the UK, for example, there is a venue. If you want to protest, if you want to demonstrate, you go to a particular venue. But a situation where you want to demonstrate and you, you, you now, you know, stop citizens from going, there are some people who are on daily, you know, income. They don't feed if they don't go out. By the time you stop this group, you are calling for more starvation. By the time you prevent people from moving, there are some people who have emergency health conditions. You are, they are unable to access health care. Then you are going to have more fatality. So when we want to demonstrate we should be orderly, we should be, you know, uh, we should do it in a way that is civil, that rights of others are not violated. And then when the security forces use force when it is peaceful, we are able to hold them to account. But when they use force in the face of violence, then it is justified because there is no absolute right, as I said. All right, uh, Dr. Gucci, uh, two questions from me now. Uh, the first one uh, has to do with the uh, body language of the president. Uh, you recall that um, uh, when uh, just before he was elected the president, part of what he stressed was that he was going to remove subsidy and that he would not be persuaded by any form of protest whatsoever. If you recall, you know what he said, I think it was at a business meeting here in Lagos. Now, one of the demands of the protesters is to revisit uh, that subsidy issue or to look into uh, the soaring price uh, of petroleum products. Uh, will you think that uh, the president has made um, uh, you know, the, the threat that he gave the other time that he would not be persuaded by any form of a protest, you know, has come to fruition. That's one. Secondly, uh, do you think that what happened in the last two days has redefined the protest map of Nigeria before Lagos will be the epicenter uh, and a, a few other uh, states in the south of Nigeria? But Lagos was uh, largely muted. You know, a few uh, protests here and there, particularly in Ojota, but we didn't see any, the sort of a thing that you will find in Lagos, maybe because of the uh, message from the governor and all the stakeholders in the state. Southeast was generally muted. Uh, it was as if that there was a decision not to be part of the protest. 
a few states in the South South, and of course Abuja and uh, the Northern Nigeria took the lead this time around. Do you think that the map of protests in Nigeria has been redrawn by what happened in the last two days? And what lessons uh, can we derive from what happened? Okay, uh, let's take it from the issue of subsidy. Be, the president, as you said, had said it that no going back on, um, the, on that issue. And I can say that that is what he did, and that is what um, is still happening. But in a democracy, the voice of the people should determine the direction of the government. It, it may not be absolute, but when you see the biting effect of a particular policy, there should be more dimensions to it. There should be a realization of the policy. When you see the monumental and unprecedented hardship that this has imposed on Nigerians, it is for the president now to do a review of that subsidy policy. Because the society is dynamic. And if it is dynamic, policies and laws should also be dynamic in response to the emerging issues in the society. So the president has made good that promise by, by not uh, going back for now, but the realities on ground, I think, call for a review of that policy. Then, on the um, issue of the outlook of protests, as you said, Lagos used to be the hub. But I was reading um, a few days ago when some scholars opined that those who used to lead protests in Lagos, when Lagos used to be the center, are now mute, partly maybe because the presidency is now, you know, being um, headed by that uh, part of the country. And they will not be seen as pulling down the government of President Ahmed Bola Tinubu. That is one school of thought. And another one is, uh, you know, I have read it, that, well, there is this attempt by the government maybe at the same level too, you know, to suppress people coming out. And this, we have seen it on two occasions. One, during the elections, there's this traditional festival that will ordinarily, you know, uh, I don't know how, what, what the name is, the Oro something. You know, it came up during the elections. And when it's happening, people don't uh, ordinarily go out. And again, this time, so there are issues that surround the outcome, or you know, or, or the, the outlook of the vote, uh, the protest in Lagos now. And as I said, well, if you look at other parts of the country, apart from Lagos, the southeast, you will discover that people generally decided to stay away. And some people we interviewed say, look, if we come out now, the way they are going to kill us is different from how they will respond to other parts of the country. It, it, it is another issue. So people, that is why I called it negative protest. You stay at home. In some southeastern states, people didn't even go out. Or, or let me even use it in present tense now. There are people uh, don't go out. They are not going out now. People are indoors. And how do you describe that? They are not protesting. They are not going about their normal duties. Someone in Onicha went to the Onicha main market. Nobody was there. So when you see all these things, it is not until people come out carrying placards that you know they are protesting. A negative protest is happening when people stay indoors too. And that is another issue. So when you see the trajectory, you will discover that, oh, yes, Lagos is a traditional hub, is now, you know, mm. silent to some extent. But that is not to say that there were no protests in parts of Lagos. But it's not as pronounced as it used to be. So these are the schools of thought as to what is happening in Lagos and other parts of the country, like the South Eastern states, in terms of the protests. But I don't believe that, you know, this redefines the future of protests. It doesn't. But it is a message that, look, things will not normally go the usual way. Yeah. They are likely to change. But you will see an issue tomorrow, and you still see Lagos to, you know, taking the lead. Yeah. So it is for us to uh, you know, pick one voice as a nation mm. and do the right thing. There will be no need for people to protest in the first place when the right things are done. Yes, and when the normal channels of communication no are there. Protest. Yes, thank you. Thank you so, so much, sir, for yeah, joining us yeah. this morning on The Morning Show.